I'm Anna. And I'm Ben. And we are Autosave. Welcome to our channel. Today we're watching Attack on Titan, Season 3, Episode 12. Last episode we opened up with a little bit of a time skip and a focus on the cattle farming goddess Historia. Uh, pretty awesome to see what she's up to, the support that she has from Levi for what she's doing for the kids underground. You yes. love to see it. Um, that made me really happy. I mean, there's definitely already progressing as a society uh, towards their view of betterment, their view of caring for those that can't take care of themselves. Uh, moving forward in not being naive and trapped. And that is a really great sight to see. It seems like there's a lot of optimism and positivity that everyone's feeling, which I'm mm. um, Will say that I like that, but then it also makes me incredibly nervous uh, when anyone's happy in a show. Facts. <laughs> this show in particular. Yes, this show in particular. Uh, we also got a little bit of an update of how we are dealing with Titans at the moment, which is by what I'm affectionately calling logging. Like that Titan got logged. Like a log was dropped on his head. I don't yeah. know what else to call it. They but. they used Aaron's new ability to create the ore and this armor and be able to create this maze that a person can stand in and entice a titan to come peek in and try to get them and then slam them with a log. Yes. Right on the nape of the neck. Uh, we also saw like people using the ore for like light. Yeah. Out, yeah. Like yeah. That. So cool. Um, but, uh, and how uh, also the effects that it's taking on Aaron and the toll, which seem yes. to be bloody, but it's hard not to just be like, Oh my God, last episode, we saw a bunch of what happened to like, I guess like the whole story, well, a good portion of the story for how Aaron came to be with this power, you know? Yes. Uh, and I, I guess how Grisha came to be in our civilization. I'm, yeah. I'm a little stumped because no pun intended for the. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm a little stumped in regards to what where Grisha came from. Yeah, we have theories, but that's literally all we have at the moment. Before last episode, I was like a hundred percent certain Grisha came from another place, like another city, and now I'm like. Because he recognized the walls. Like, I'm like, okay, was Grisha here before? Like, years and years ago. Kicked out, turned into a titan, and then just ate somebody and became a titan again? Or became a human again? Like, I don't know. I'm unsure now. And that is sucky. But I'm interested to see what the truth is here. Also, we got Grisha's introduction to Carla. How that relationship came to be. And how Keith... I, Pretty sure it was like jealous. He, oh no, he was totally jealous. Yeah, and just like um, Mikasa totally was jealous when <laughs> Historia and Aaron were talking a little bit too much at the beginning of the last episode. Facts. Uh, so maybe that was the overarching theme of last episode was jealousy. Mm -hmm. I, I we ended with like a really great scene. I love like when the ending of an episode has like the credits rolling on top mm -hmm. of it. We ended with a really great scene of Carla talking about Aaron. Um, saying he's already special, how right. cute he is. I love it. It was a great, honestly, I, one of my really favorite episodes. It was really poignant. I think the words there, you know, we've wondered from watching this show, is Aaron special? Is he just that kind of, he got this crazy power? Is he just supposed to be special? Because a lot of the times in shows, it always seems like the main character is just special and it's not because they're a normal person. Like, they're literally special yeah. in the universe. And here we have a... It, the picture has now been painted for us that he was normal. He was just a normal kid. And someone else put this burden, pressure, gift onto him. And he's still just himself. But now he has this, this duty and this curse this gift this power however you want to think about it my only thing is like for why like uh why did grisha not like why, why is it aaron's duty to avenge his mother the uh, like my best guess is that 
Grisha was obviously on the run. Mm -hmm. It was only a matter of time. The best option to keep that power safe would have been to inject it into somebody so there was no syringe evidence. And despite the bullet for the greater good, question yeah. mark, we thought that maybe like Grisha was working with Reiner and Bert Holt and like had an, like a great, a grand plan. But then after learning who these people inside the walls are and that they're actually people and like growing to have a family, like he changed his mind, mm -hmm. just like how it affected Reiner and Bert Holt or more so Reiner, like being around these people for years. Mm -hmm. We don't know. I think the I think I mean I like to think that I I am right and you are right. Uh, it, that feels the best to me that it needed to be Aaron because Aaron needed to eat someone yeah. that was able that had the power of the Titans and Grisha knew that was him. And I I do like speculating that Grisha had originally come with the same mission possibly that Reiner and Bertholdt had but neglected it because he fell in love. And obviously I think that that fits because like you said, how we saw the effect of being within the walls and getting to know people and getting close with people, mm -hmm. what effect that had on their psyche, Reiner yeah. and Bertholtz. And so I don't know, it's just speculation, but I like it, it feels good. I'm hoping that that ends up being the case. Or do I hope that it's something so wild that I could not have even imagined it? That's also possible. That would I would in, probably enjoy that as well. That would be in the typical Attack on Titan fashion, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming we're going to the basement now. We're going to gear up to go. Please. Uh, I've been wanting to see the basement. I, we have so many, like, oh, it feels like it's been years that we've guessed what's in the basement. What's the basement about? Dude, say what you will about... Reiner, Bert Holt, and the Oranga Titan. I feel kind of bad for them. They've been like sitting there for months. I don't know how what they're doing for food. I don't know. Like, uh, are they crystallized while they're waiting? I I don't know. I feel bad for them. They have board games. Probably board games. That's my wrestle guess. each other. Re yes, yes. Training. Yeah. You ready? Yeah, I'm really nervous though. All right, <laughs> let's get into it. What were you doing? <laughs> I don't torture. He was yeah. torturing people. Kore jo sagru koto wa deki nai yo desu. Ningen no kotsuzu eki yurai no seibun dewa aru yo na no desu ga. Spinal fluid. Ifureto tachimachi kikashite shimasu. Interesting. Like any Titan blood? Yara nai hodo kodo na shiro mono desu. Reisuke ga tsukutta no takai yori mo tousho no mokuteki ni shiyou suru hoka nakaro. Watashi wa heishi toshite wa teo inomi desu. Motto mo seizon kakuritsu no takai. Levi. Oh my god, are they gonna inject Levi? No, they're just gonna give it to him, I think. Oh, okay. Who wouldn't inject him? They're basically entrusting him with the decision of what to do with it. When and who to use it on. Ooh. It's a lot of pressure. Another torture device? So, by giving it to Levi, is it basically saying you get to decide when to give it to Aaron as like a power up? Because it if says you who to use it on. But yeah, but if you give it to anybody else, they're just going to turn into like an unintelligent titan. Why, in what situation would that help? I mean, think about it. What if you're f fighting Bert Holt or Reiner? And what if you turn someone into a titan in hopes that they beat Reiner or Bert Holt and eat that, them? But it, like, everything, every bit of knowledge that they have would suggest that it would just be a titan that doesn't have any intention like, like it just would be like any other titan they know yeah but i mean it's kind of the situation where if you need it if you last ditch effort you know Grisha 
壁に入ってから独力で王政を探るなどしていたんだろうし覚悟がなきゃできることじゃない True. そんなお父さんた十歳の息子に見せたかった家の地下室ここにすべてがあると言い残した地下室ここには一体何があると思う That's what we wanna know. <laughs> History? Couldn't say even if you wanted to. Yep. Interesting. It fits what Grisha said to Aaron. Mm -hmm. He keeps asking him. <笑>そのからだはもう以前のようには動かせん。現場の式は判事に託せ。鬼も使えんのはまべ家宝を負けず。連中には俺がそう五年だと説明する。それでいいな。Look at his eyebrows. So he was willing to die a few episodes ago. He still is. He's selfish, though. Weeping here.確かにお前の言う通りだ。手追いの兵士は現場を退く頃、これの真実が明らかになる瞬間にはしなければならない。I wouldn't want to miss the basement either, honestly. I'm really, really happy we had that interaction. <laughs> Sasha, this is the best day of your life. <laughs> He said without a ruckus. <laughs> she looks like a titan. <laughs> she should be unconscious, but she's still moving. Like how like force put in captions there because it was so unintelligible hearing them speak. <laughs> yeah, what happened to her? <laughs> Iconic. Where did he go? Oh. Yeah, let's not kill him right away, please. <笑><笑><笑> <laughs> God, this brings back memories. They need to get a room. Uh, if it's the two of them fighting, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. God, something awful is gonna happen, dude. This is so much fun, and everyone's having a great time. Why isn't anybody stopping us? 
<laughs> right? We've seen this yeah. before. Yeah. We have literally seen them like on these yeah. same stairs before. Way to bring back season one! Right. Full circle. What? That was the first thing we saw this season, right? This feels so crazy. It's like hope. This is just a, remember season one with the reaction to the scouts coming home. This is so great. <laughs> I like superheroes. Long time. It's deserved. Look at him smile! <gasps> this is awesome! This is so good! I legit thought he was pulling out a microphone. <laughs> this is epic. This is Attack on Titan. Horses, Ugh. screaming. Period. Yelling people's names. Yeah. All right, that was season three, episode 12 of Attack on Titan. Um, I don't, I, I'm fearful that I feel hope. There was so much hope. It's a great end though. It's a good wrap up. Oh my God. Because yeah. like, we are wrapping up with that that hopeful feeling. We're ab about to embark on this mission that we've been waiting for since episode one, basically. And I think that's a really great ending to this part one of season three. Part one season. I'm not really sure what it is. In a really weird way, it feels like this was like the end of the show. Like it, because of how many how many things they book ended here. And like how many themes and everything they brought back, it was like right. it was it it really felt like its own like season one episode one to season three episode twelve was its own like right. book. I always appreciate when seasons wrap up where in a way that if they never got another season, you would still feel satisfied by the chapter end. Yeah. Um like if you, I, I just feel like I've seen so many shows where it doesn't end in a way that makes you feel like you can just be, take a breath and be like, oh, that was good. Yeah. And it makes you just like, you need that next thing really, really bad. Like, obviously I still feel like I really, it's almost like got, it made me still really want to see the next thing, but it didn't hurt. The yeah. ending didn't hurt. I agree. No, I completely agree. I'm kind of like, just lost my mind at what's gonna happen um the last thing we saw here was reiner and bert on top of a wall mm -hmm. which is interesting because it's like the plan was to wait for aaron yeah. at the basement maybe they're like level one before they get into, oh, to get to cool. the basement like a video game 
Uh, it seems like Reiner has a scuff mark or scrape on his cheek, uh, which makes me wonder, are we seeing kind of directly after? Uh, was it a couple episodes ago that we saw the ending of a fight with the Beast Titan? Yeah. I'm wondering if this scene is right after that or what? Um, it, it seems like the Beast Titan has left now, and I like your hypothesis that maybe they are... They are there to stop this, and the Beast Titan's not necessarily involved at this level mm -hmm. yet. <sighs> I guess, uh, like, going from the top, we had talk about the syringe, and then it was given to Levi. The, t the line was technology far superior, which now puts me back on the boat of it's another civilization that's just mm -hmm. way more advanced. It was... Uh, it was after she said technology that was superior to theirs, but she said what we have now. Yeah, correct. Which I really liked that phrasing because it opens up, not only is it possibly a different group of people, but a different time, like way earlier. Like how is it that the, the people that many years ago before the memory swipe how what was their society like if they were that technologically advanced that the current humans can't even fathom like i really want to see what it's like it's not like it's going to be robots or anything but we don't know that well you we don't it, know it could that literally be anything and the only way i could convince people to go back to the stone age with me would be have, having no memories of what could yeah. be. It could have been that the king was a fanatic of the olden days when things were simple and, you know, and he could have just been like, technology is the root of evil and that's why we've strayed and why we need to be punished and created this society. This is the only way we can stop global warming. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, uh, he was like, humans need to be stopped. We're a mess. I, and dude, so I'm going to wipe all your I'm memories. I'm so interested into seeing how it unravels and see, like, what was that motivation? Because, like, it it must have been some damn compelling motive mm -hmm. to do all this. I I was really interested. Um, I guess we'll get there. But, uh. I, like I, in my mind real quick we'll touch on it again i'm sure i think one of the things if not many of the things in the basement is history mm -hmm. i think that the dialogue here that was the had very beginning was uh m made it very like i don't things grisha couldn't say even if you wanted to what it was I, they brought up that the memories before the mind swipe yes and but and also like the like the little flashback of Irwin's dad like i'm like that would make sense that would make sense to me that like what that's so precious that knowledge of what came before and the thought of that being permanently gone is devastating and th so i think that that is probably has to deal with what's in the basement, what came before, history. I just, if I were Irwin, I would have made the same exact decision because how can you go, how can you learn and be it be hinted at since you were a child? You've been thinking about this. You've been ruminating over this idea that there is this vast knowledge and past and history that was stolen from people's minds. That's like the ultimate treasure like an explorer would want to go get. I would want to be there and I could totally understand that intense desire to learn what was taken. Like why would someone take this history and these memories? Like it, what was, was, what was the memories? It's what the pinnacle of archaeology. It's like if like it's not even that it was lost to time. It's that someone to some person decided to not let it be remembered. Yeah, it's like um when people 
uh, you hear different historical contexts of people throwing away books or damaging burial sites or you know there's like different times in history where things have been wiped out by people that came later but this is different in a in a very interesting way it's like i like it's like i'm trying i'm trying to think back to like um I am so upset that I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Yuri. I'm trying to think back to you, like, Yuri and, like, the whole acknowledgement, like, everybody who has had that power passed on has been steadfast in the initial belief that this was the right way to go about things. Mm -hmm. And we obviously don't know if it was, it's, like, an actual, like, mind control, like, forcing the person to do it this way or if people knew what their initial reason was for doing it um but there's just so much information that we have right now like what well the the founding titans the people like yuri and and frida i I tend to lean closer to the feeling of being kind of above it all. Like you're looking down at the timeline of the world and people's lives and past and future. And that like, it, the word God was used to describe them and they described themselves that way. Their family especially described them that way. And it fits that they wouldn't touch and they wouldn't interfere with the course of the future or fate because they are above it now. They aren't even living in the day-to-day life anymore. But comes, but that comes with the knowledge that Yuri had of something inevitably, the, the world inevitably crumbling, which would make me feel like he the isn't a god. The world as they know it. Yeah. If you see timeline spanning forever of societies building and falling and building and falling who are you to step in and stop kind of the course of history history repeats itself no you're right i I, it's just like when you're saying the world's going to crumble are you saying that it's going to be the flood and that every like it's going to restart are you saying that one horrific events going to happen to one society of what kind like is the world as they know it within the walls or the world itself which also brings me to an like an interesting point the technology far superior right Mm -hmm. if yuri yuri was called a god no if who's the real god if this power was manufactured in a lab is it the person making this power? Is this something in the world inherently and it has always been a thing in this world? Or is this something that one person made this ultimate power and everything else is derived from it? Huh. You know, like, it is this... uh like that, the the greatest Titan power, the founding power, the founding to control Titans or turn other people into Titans, whatever. That that power in itself, like how how did that come to be? Like what what I think that it could be implied that it was made by someone, or it could like I, that's a possibility. I mean, right? I mean, we're taught we're putting the the power of titans into the context of a technological advance and not something naturally occurring within this episode which is interesting because i had previously thought this was just something that was happening upon the planet like a mutation of sorts an evolution of sorts and then people harnessed the ability to create it for themselves by turning people into titans okay so you're a scientist, right? You're making, I, I don't know what for, but you're, maybe it's for like the perfect heal-all drug. Maybe it's something, because obviously people who can turn have uh, like the ability to self-heal wounds, right? Mm-hmm. You're trying to invent this thing. 
and you've had one success more so than any other one. And you need that one success to continue to like look at under a microscope to be able to replicate it and continue making this wonder drug, right? The right way. And like to, to, to make this wonder drug the right way. And then somebody steals that from you and takes it away. So you're left in a lab trying to recreate this wonder, like the, the perfect wonder drug, but you can't do it the same way. You, you don't have that original OG perfect mix. So in, in, in exchange, you're just making flawed versions of right. that that would turn people into just monstrous beings like Titans. A another way to look at it, which we've used as a possibility before, is that one society created this as a warlike method yeah. against another society. And what if a scientist created this for the hope of rejuvenation and reviving people and keeping people alive longer. And the government was like, but how else could we use this? And they realized they could use it as a punishment. Mm -hmm. And the only way to stop that would be taking away that. I don't know. The perfect one. The, 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 uh, the like one that all the clones stem, stem yeah. from basically. Yeah. Um, I want to go back to when you we were talking about why Yuri would not have interfered or changed things. Um, and it when we were talking about that, I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. It made me think back to what the Beast Titan first said. He said they this society wasn't ready yet. And what if Yuri wasn't interfering because he was waiting for society to get to the point of whatever was inevitably supposed to happen? Yeah. And so it's like maybe the Beast Titan is also waiting for this this I mean, thing. His to line happen. was not yet, eh? Like mm -hmm. I, I think that that is a very good point because it leads back to our theories about Yuri being an oracle or having some type of ability to see the future. Right. And if that's the case, would that lend itself mm -hmm. to there being a piece of Right, if, if for there being a story, you're writing on the wall like a prophecy, or is it something that the Oranga Titan also has the ability to foresee? Right, like we can't necessarily say in this hypothesis that Frida and Yuri didn't want to help humanity. I mean, in this hypothesis, they they could have seen that the time to help humanity was not in their lifetime and that there would be a time and the perfect moment, the perfect situation where humanity would actually be saved. Yeah. And that anything they could do or try to interfere with at the moment wouldn't actually fix things or wouldn't actually aid humanity. You, you think, um, what did the Oranga Titan hold up in his hands when he said, not yet, eh? Like, what was he looking at? Remember? The ODM gear? What's the one thing, presu presuming oh, that we've changed based we're off We're changing of our weapons. Yeah. What if, like, this is it? Maybe he's waiting for them to actually start harnessing and using the power of Titans for to the furtherment of society and yeah. technological advances. Maybe that's what started it all, right? Like, obviously, we've seen how we've already used the titan's power not just in a way to defeat titans but in a way to light your own home yeah. maybe if choosing to use the titan's ability in uh, in any means is already the wrong choice and is the it, and is the precursor or to is what, the right choice but like it's the thing that leads a society to its inevitable demise the reason that this society started in its first place or like you said, or it's like kind of an alien situation where aliens would come to Earth hypothetically once we've gotten to a certain point mm -hmm. to invite us into a planetary, like, universal You're waiting guild. for them to grow yeah. as a species. Huh. It's very interesting. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I, we should keep going with the episode? Or yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I, It just makes you wonder again, like, if, if you and I are or are or could be correct in the assumption that Oranga Titan is related to Grisha, how does that fit in to the overarching importance of, I don't know, like I, it's, it's, I think it's, it's a still, lot to think about. I think 
Grisha could still very much be related. I agree. I think Grisha could have been the first person that was meant to check on society to see if they were ready. He could have been meant to do a mission like Berthold and Reiner, where they were supposed to basically kill people and break down the walls, maybe even force society to grow. Honestly, like if this was, if this ends up being a very overarching kind of positive, it would be the force to grow, forcing these, the humanity to break out of their cage and grow. Because if you think about it, these people have never seen the sea. They don't even know if it really exists. And it's a shame. They've literally been locked in this cage. They are not living their true lives. They are not going freely. They do not have freedom. And are they ready for freedom? That's like, are they going to just hide when someone opens the cage and is like, go, it's safe now? Are they going to be too scared to leave because they're, it's their comfort zone? It's a good question. I If, if, uh, if my brother was sent to do a mission and it appears that he failed or diverted and changed plan, then I'd want to be the person to go get him or my family member, not necessarily brother. Right. Like it, but then that leads me to the thought of, okay, does the orangutan know about the basement? If he does, presumably because he's waiting for Aaron there, has he destroyed what's in the basement? I feel like he only knows about the basement in the now because of Bertholdt and Reiner. What's what's stopping him from going in? Maybe he wants them to get there and he wants them to see the truth before whatever happens. Maybe he wants them to know the truth. What, orangutan good guy? I'm not saying it's necessarily a good guy thing to want someone to know the truth. Or- you can want someone to know the truth before you kill them. That's some fucked up stuff. It's just a possibility. Yeah. He could want them to know the truth because maybe there's a decision that needs to be made. What? Maybe he wants to see what they end up doing with that information that they learned. Yeah. And it's not necessarily that Reiner and Bertholdt are supposed to stop them. Mm-hmm. But maybe it's to see what they do once they learn. Interesting. I like, I, I, like I'm, my mind's in so many places because like you think back to like when the Oranga Titan was first introduced and Reiner and Bert Holt being like, that's our only way home. And presumably because he could control Titans or has what he needs to get back to that place and they couldn't do it alone. Mm-hmm. And it's like Aaron also has that parallel ability in a way. I don't know. Um, or maybe they were told they are not allowed to return until he tells them they are. Yeah. Um, we had next, I guess, we had Levi being given the syringe and being given the choice of when to use it. And who to use it on, which I think is a vital line of information, piece of information, is who to use it on. I think it's very fair to say that you, if you're going into a possible dangerous situation, you don't necessarily know that the person that's going to be next to you it, in the heat of the moment is going to be Aaron. So what if there is a chance where Levi has to take a risk to either inject himself or someone else in order to beat Reiner and Bertholdt or something? In my mind... The only thing that makes sense is to use it on Aaron. Like there, like I do not see. I could. I, I'm trying, but I could not see any realistic. But it's not labeled. It doesn't matter. So will it do anything to him? It's, it's not like it'll enhance it. The look, other thing said armor. It I know. Said it would give him something. This but, doesn't say it's going to give him anything. I know, but I do not see any instance that it would give a substantial benefit to any character in this show to or any situation to turn someone into just a regular titan and like have them have them just go about trying to eat people but i'm saying it would be in a fight yeah with I know. people that if they won they would have the power to turn back and forth i've never seen an unintelligent titan beat an intelligent titan and i don't think it's possible well what if aaron was helping why would he go why would he'd have the power to control them Okay, like he like 
turns turn, a mate for Aaron. Who, turn Mikasa into a titan. She'll be battling with herself internally. Aaron can control. She won't her. be battling with herself inter- internally. She'll be into Possibly. a into a nightmare place that we don't know of. I don't know because part of me is like, well, because of the family she's from, maybe she'd have a little more of a chance. Maybe I don't know. Like it. it but Aaron also possibly could control her. What if they could fight together against Berthold and Reiner? And if you're going to kill Berthold and Reiner, wouldn't you also want to use, sacrifice them in order to have another Aaron? I, okay, that's legitimate. And I, that's my number two. My number one with like most probable is still Aaron taking it. I just don't see any benefit if it's not labeled with a power or another enhancer. It's a risk. It's a risk in itself. Right? Yeah, but it could... I don't know if I would take the risk if it's not labeled because I'd be just injecting more fluid into him that's going to do nothing. What harm? What harm is that going to do? Losing it. That's the harm. Not having the ability to have another Titan soldier like Eren in your ranks. Okay. In a do or die situation... You have one or two options, right? You're actually there. You're about to die. Everyone on your team's about to die. Would you rather give an unlabeled bottle that last time Aaron ate a bottle, it gave him a power that he didn't previously have? But it was or, labeled. Correct. Or, and that's a risk in itself, or give it to one of your fellow humans to turn them into a plain, normal Titan. Depends on the situation. In any situation, I'm shoving that down Aaron's throat and crossing my fingers and toes and hoping that it gives him wings or makes him have like... I'd possibly not even use it. If I... I would... If... I would rather not use it than give it to him. Because in, in my current thinking in this moment, it would do nothing if given to him. And I would rather it last. And if some some scientifical inv- advancement happens where we learn more about it, it can be used in the future. Because if I use it, it evaporates. It's gone. It's given to someone. It's no more. Correct. So maybe I'd just rather die. But if you die, whoever kills you gets it. What if whoever kills me is a titan and then I just like leave it before they swallow me? It's not like they're going to eat it. I don't know. I don't know. We won't know until well, something happens. We won't. No. One one line that we had that was really interesting. Um, it was when Erwin and Levi were talking to each other. Uh, Erwin was te- like talking to Levi and saying, "After me is Hanji, and after Hanji." And I assumed for it to be you, but it was n- it never finished. The sentence w- never completed. I feel like. It would have to be whoever was, like, the other leader that had been in the longest. Yeah. Because, um, obviously, we just were... I, when we were all sitting around in a circle, I was, like, the next, I was so just, like, who are these other people? Yeah. You know, before it was told to us that these were the other squad leaders, I was like, who are these people? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't I, recognize you guys. After, like, just thinking about it for a second, I think it was just my, like, anime... I love Levi, I want him to be in charge mind and not realistic, which is, and then the next, like whoever the next in line is, like yeah. it, it would be It'd another. probably be experience. Yeah, for sure. Um, information available for public disclosure. Meet. Meet. After the fall of Wall Maria, Maria? Maria. Maria. There was a dramatic decrease in food production. Livestock in particular suffered due to requiring plentiful yep. land. As a result, meat became expensive and occasions to eat it are mm-hmm. scarce. It makes me think of uh, when we first see Aaron and Mikasa, they're in a field, like a big field. And I'm sure there's a lot of like cattle and stuff around. Makes sense. It, it makes a lot of sense. Um, That's also the biggest um, enclosure is within that wall. Yeah. Interesting. Makes me look at uh, Sasha a little bit differently. I understand why she got so, ra- like, she was savage there. Because yeah. if she hasn't been having meat for months, it makes sense that she would act like I that. I like how Marlo's just been, like, living this, like, prestigious meat-in-every-meal life. That he's like, what's the big deal? Yeah. I, 
I'm wary of his character. It's it's like um here we have this kind of steady group of characters that we that have been friends from the beginning and now Marlo's like a scout on the same ranks as them. He I know he's not the same ranks, he's a recruit, uh but he's in the friend group now. Yeah. And he's sitting with them when they're eating and I'm like okay like what are we gonna do with this character what are we gonna use him for are we gonna have our recruits our they're not even recruits anymore our squad levi uh protect this new recruit that they've welcomed into their friend group because he is kind of he's was described as a as a character like Aaron, and so that leads me to believe that in the face of a dire situation, he would possibly be sac- like he would sacrifice himself and or charge in like Aaron would, and it it could open up the possibility of one of our steady characters that we have come to love, uh, trying to protect him. I don't think he's as as John describes a suicidal bastard <laughs> like uh, Aaron is. I think he's possibly a little more uh, easily shaken. Then maybe Aaron is like, I remember when Levi, uh, that interaction, when John and Levi and everyone caught Marlo and Hitch in the yeah. woods, Marlo was definite, but then again, he was looking at captain Levi who he respected. So it makes sense why he would kind of calm down and be humbled and accept his fate. I hope we'll see his first reaction to a Titan. I think we will. I yeah. mean, Honestly, I'm curious to see it. I'm nervous to see it. But everyone else that we have followed has has killed a Titan. Now, some of them have even killed people. So Marlo, he's he's new meat. He's fresh meat. Yeah. And that is worrisome. As Jean said, he just needs to stay back and he needs to watch and he needs to learn and he needs to take notes, basically, so he can come back in one piece and then next time, you know, they didn't really get that. No. None of our characters got the chance to ease into this at all. No. Thrown into the pool. Couldn't Honestly. Swim. I'm glad that we actually saw Bert Holt, like, running or riding away after being the mm-hmm. Colossal Titan. That's something that I've, like, wanted to have just see it because, like... I was like, I didn't see anybody like running away, you know? And they layered it with one of my favorite lines of his. I just think it's so, um, it's such amazing dialogue to have him be like, I thought, yeah. dot, 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 I felt sorry for you. Because it could just be him saying, I felt sorry for you. But there's like added layers when you add in what's added in before, I thought. Because that's also past tense. It doesn't necessarily mean that's how he feels now. You know, Mm -hmm. and I just think that's a really interesting phrase and I'm really glad that it came back. I feel scared and I feel like we're going to lose someone. We had so much fun. We had so much fun. And okay, it was really freaking hilarious that Jean and Aaron were like, why is no one stopping us? Dude, it. It's so odd that two anime characters fist fighting each other brings me such like calmness and peace. It felt like it was okay. I never once was like, oh no, they're going to beat each other to a pulp. Like I was like, this is good for them. It felt so nostalgic. (laughs) Like it felt like I can't. It felt healthy. Yeah. Which is so weird. I can't believe it's only been four months, dude. Holy. Like all this has happened in four months. And they were all um, drawn to look um, younger. Yeah. I don't know if it was just how I felt when I looked at it, but obviously their faces uh, when they're looking at a Titan or fighting are hardened and they they almost look like they've aged a few years. Yeah. And in this scene when they're all sitting and eating and then Mikasa, Armin, and Aaron on the stairs, you know, I they look so young. Their faces look so soft. They look so at peace. And it's crazy to see that kind of change. And it's really nice and also terrifying. I can't believe, like, it felt so cool to have, like, the full circle of them just in an alley again, like, talking like this. Um, Aaron had a couple of lines that I almost, like, uh, 
I almost took like as like a dig to Armin, <laughs> like which is like which is why we've all got to find the things we can do. Mikasa has her thing. I have my thing, and then just like looks at Armin like in a funny way. But it leads me to think like I wonder if Armin's gonna have like a like a significant push or like something that he brings to the table. Going we know forward. he's brilliant. Yeah. We know he's brilliant. We know he's willing to do what he needs to do. We know he's brave. There's a lot of great characteristics that Armin has. And I think that, and he's also like very observant and a really um, well aware. And I think he, his, his ability to think of tactics or to think of um, psychology of how people are going to act or how they truly feel. I think he's just very, very aware and very perceptive. And I could see great potential for him to be a strategist and high up in their ranks. I agree. I it, like how many did, in, in the way that I said that it felt like an end of like a series almost. We had so many flashbacks like or just or not flashbacks, just like. Things that are being parallels brought up, to parallels. The, literally, like even the first episode or the first couple episodes. And of I think one. episode five is when we got the pictures of the book from the outside. Yeah. Yeah. Episode five, I have a legal book from outside world, quote unquote. Yeah, yeah. And Armin ran over and was showing Aaron, like, by the water. Yeah. I, and here we have Aaron basically. We're learning here that he doesn't necessarily believe that what was in that book is actually real outside yeah. of the walls. Which is fair. I I um I don't know. Like it, it's so interesting how we got I don't know, like how how we got the beginning of this season, like Aaron like on a beach. Mm -hmm. And when is that? Yeah. Like who, how who far? Knows? Dude, Aaron looks straight pissed that Armin's talking about there's more than just Titans outside the walls, doesn't he? It's like, I don't know. Is he looking at Armin like, ugh, Armin's a dreamer. He's going to get himself in trouble or killed if he talks like that. Or like, it's judgment. I'm not really sure exactly what it is. I know that I don't think Aaron necessarily believes any of it. Uh, but I don't know if I can read too much into that expression or if it's just meant to be a, a plain face. Yeah. Because then it softens when he turns, you know? Yeah. It, I don't think he's ju being judgmental. I think he's more like, okay, yeah, sure, maybe. Like, a piece of him, ho I think he hopes that Armin is right in this dream. That there are these fiery, fiery water. <laughs> I, like, it's so interesting, though, because, like, like look at this interact. Like, it agreed, like, I'm probably just, like, Look, like looking too much into it but the only reason I am is because of what comes after this like there's more than just Titans outside the wall that weird expression whatever and then Aaron says uh sorry fiery water lands of ice sandy snow fields I joined the scouts so I could see all of that and then Aaron's like yeah you sure did and then look at Armin like, what is he realizing What here? is this? Yeah, I... He just realized something. What, that he's never gonna, like, that it's a pipe dream? Or, like, because it know. doesn't seem I, that maybe simple. Maybe it's more connected to the reason he joined. Like... It's like, and then he's like... part of the reason he joined, really, I think, I think it's somewhat a lie. I think, yes, he wants to see all those things, but I think that he really did join because of Aaron. In... Yeah, no, I agree with you. But in this situation, it almost gives me the vibe of him, like, putting on an act. Mm -hmm. Like, it seems like he realized something and then was like, okay, I'll snap back to, like, normal, cheery. Let's start by seeing the sea. Right, which I think could connect to the possibility that Aaron realizes that his friends joined because of, because of him. And Armin's trying and to And it's a him. sore yeah. subject. And That's Armin true. wants him to believe that it's it's... Armin's dream to do this yeah. and that Aaron isn't dragging him down or making him risk his life. Obviously Mikasa is going to be up front. She'd be like, yeah, I joined for Aaron, you know? Yeah, but you're right, you're right. Armin has never specifically said that he joined to protect Aaron or to stay beside Aaron. I, 
like it's funny thinking Levi's listening to all of this and yeah. then being like like and having no context about there being like an outside world with like deserts and like ocean he stuff never like saw that. The book. Hmm? He never saw well, the book. Well, yeah, I'm like Levi's probably like these fucking idiots. They have no idea. They're listening to fairy tales. Like they have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know. I think he'd be open. I think Levi is. Uh, I think deep down he is curious, and he. I think he's open or believes that things are bigger, deeper, wider. I than agree. they seem and then what he's seen. Because if you think about it, he grew up in the underground. Mm -hmm. And then he came above and he saw this wide world with an open sky. Yeah. If anyone would be perceptive to the idea of beautiful things outside the walls, it would be Levi. Definitely. I I meant it like a jokingly, like, he's probably like, what are they even on about? Oh, okay. But in like a serious note, you're exactly right. And his expression, if we, we saw his expression to the sky, imagine what it would be to like the wonders of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, he probably would wish that Ferlin and Isabel could see them. You made me cry. I, I, I gotta say, though, for those characters, at least they got to to be above. At least they yeah. got to be out of the underground. Wish they didn't have to die, but at least they got to be out there and breathe that air all together. I, the Han scene killed me, man. That I did not appreciate I appreciated it. But I, I, I meant like yeah, my I, heart I'm, didn't appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's. This was a very great tie up for a part or a season. If I think about it, like um, pretend you were going to be waiting for the next season to come out live, you know. This this was a good a good place to to stop. Agreed. You know, in, before waiting but if you if you've watched the video that we put out before this we're not looking or watching the after credit scene what the fuck could that be i like we ended seeing what could it be if we started the show seeing hearing like seagulls basically and aaron on a beach yeah you know what could be this mystical after credit that might be a major spoiler for us because I already feel like I'm guessing that Aaron's going to get to the beach at some point. Exactly. Uh, is it confirmation? Because I'm pretty sure in that beginning credit, it doesn't show us the water. It's just that we hear the sounds of yeah. the beach with his face. But I mean, it, I feel like that wouldn't be too much of a don't watch this contention point. But it'd be of like confirmation. Like, remember how I said about the after credit with the wall falling yeah. apart, how I thought maybe it was just symbolic and not necessarily literal. Yeah. Possibly. That could be thought of as the same thing. Like I it's just symbolic of Aaron being outside of the walls and but we already had we already things. had the first part of that. Like it like cuz in my mind I'm like, "Oh shit, this is like the perfect way to like wrap up like the loose ends we needed to and to tie it all in thematically for the next part of this series." But I'm sitting in a chair where I'm going to watch this episode next week. I'm not yeah. waiting years. We're like, not waiting. I, I like, whatever's in the after credit, we might find out next episode. But we won't know. <laughs> I am so curious. Did we make the right decision? Well, if even if we didn't, if we did or we didn't, and we find out later on what the after credit was at least we will be able to add to the conversation and the debate about watching this after credit. We will, we will have our own perspective and our own hindsight reasons to watch it or not to watch it. And that will make for a good discussion, I think, of the benefits of watching it or pros and cons, you know, either way, we'll have insight on that and we'll be able to talk on it. If I'm thinking, like, there's... I'm definitely just trying to make up theories here, but because there's no way that this show would ever have gotten canceled because of how amazing it is. But if I'm thinking about it from a production standpoint, it'd be like, okay, I could see a studio trying to end the story here because it wraps everything up so well for this mm -hmm. chapter, for lack of a better term. Let's make it so there's so much hype for next season by showing a piece of it so that there's no chance that like, yeah. that, that, 
like people can't wait for it. Like I obviously when I said that I like when seasons wrap up nicely. Yeah. Uh, I meant that in terms of when I'm watching shows that have been out forever. Yeah. And like I'm not waiting on it. If I if I'm waiting on a show, then I want it to end in a very hype way, you know. But if I it's already three seasons on Crunchyroll and it came out 10 years ago, yeah. you know, I and I know that they didn't get another season, then I want it to end in a nice way. I, in my mind, it has to be something that we would see later like uh, next season and uh, but it has to be something that we'd see next season that we'd be able to make assumptions based Mm -hmm. off of that and and obviously not knowing what it is i don't know if i'd like that or not and just not knowing if i would or not is infuriating this is honestly gonna drive us crazy i mean like we have been debating this ourselves of whether to watch it or not since we heard that there was contention about it we heard that there was any amount of Debate. Debate about it. We have been discussing. And it's hard to discuss things with such limited knowledge about what you're discussing. And then I'm like, okay, even if it isn't, even if it is something that I could have watched and not gotten anything negatively affecting my experience out of, knowing that it could, that it's a debate would almost affect my viewing of that yeah. and how I would think about it. So it's like they're like <sighs> I find it both intriguing and enticing and terrifying. Me too. To think about what that after credit is. Because it's almost like I, I feel like I might be enticed to watch it out of pure curiosity and excitement. But I feel like the it's almost like what I said earlier in the discussion about, is it a waste to use the syringe on Aaron? It's almost like I feel like if I gave in to the curiosity and how enticing the after credit might be, would it be a waste of what could come in yeah. my enjoyment of the show and my theories? And I don't know. Just, okay. I have it's one, a roller coaster. I have one question before you before we end it. If you had to make a guess right now of knowing what we know, if Grisha ate a person with the ability to turn into Titans and showed up at the walls, or he already had the ability to turn the power of the Titans and then somehow got to the gate with that power, or the walls with that power. So Which, he either was born with the power or he ate someone? No, he either already had the power. We don't, like, it doesn't matter how he had gotten it. Before like, he got to the walls, he already had the power. Yeah. Or? He was a titan wandering and ate somebody who had the power. I feel like he already had it because it seems too much of a coincidence for him to have appeared with clothes on in human form right in front of the scout that found him. I would probably agree. Which is even more like telling that it could have been a mission. Well, then again, they're not turned into a Titan like naked. If you come, did Ymir have clothes on when she came out of it? I don't think Ymir did, but I think Aaron did. Okay. Or that was just a visual for us that she was yeah. naked. Okay, well, it could have been that he was, he ate someone, but it just seemed way too, how is it that he ate someone that had the power of the Titans right before that scout found him, you know? Yeah. Seems a little bit too much uh, of a coincidence if that was the case. Agreed-ish? I don't know anymore. Agreed-ish? <sighs> you good? Yeah. This was this is a hard one, guys. Yeah. Is... All right. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I can't wait for next time. We will see you next time. See ya.